good to be with you guys and to be able to share a few things uh, uh, with you. Like uh, Lindsay said, uh, uh, we kind of represent the Utah Weed Supervisors Association. Jerry and I do. do. He's the president and I'm kind of the secretary, treasurer, do all the other things that Jerry doesn't want to do. So uh, with that, uh, we're going to jump right into some of the EDMAPS Pro functions and where we really need to start with this uh, so that when we get to the walk, the polygon, you guys will kind of understand uh, where we're coming from and, and what, what that entails. So the first thing that, that we're going to discuss is, as is, is you guys have all seen this, and if, if you haven't, you know, I encourage you to get signed up and, and, and learn about, uh, you know, how to do some of these things. Uh, so if you go to edmaps.org, uh, you sign in, and you're going to go to My Edmaps, and this is kind of that same uh, page that Chuck showed there, and I'm going to talk about five things here, and these five things generate onto EdMaps Pro, and so the first one that's really important is, is my species list, and that can be by state, or you can go in and individually add those species. Another one uh, that Chuck talked about is my saved queries. You can save those queries and then it is unique to the user, and you can you can transfer that and have that on your device for the EdMaps Pro. Uh, the next one is uh, number three is my county list, uh, and again you can go it's it's user friendly uh, and it transfers over you know it, you kind of create it on EdMaps.org and then you have it on your device. Uh, photo projects uh, it's it's been a long time coming. Uh, it's a great uh, to be able to monitor. And like Chuck said, you know, you can really mirror those images and, and go back year after year and you have uh, data over time. Uh, the next one is project areas. Uh, you can create your project areas on edmaps.org and then you, you can have that on edmaps pro. And one nice thing about photo projects and project areas is, is that if you have multiple users that that you want to share these with or they're out in the field you can do that uh, with multiple users and it transfers right over to uh, their sign in as they they go to edmaps pro so let's move on over to the app so our opening screen again you have to log in uh, like you do and usually and it'll save it as you go through and work but this is kind of the opening screen when you open that up uh, and you can see that you can see our data that's right there. So the, the side that we're going to talk about uh, first is, is the app settings. And these, again, are generated from edmaps.org. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about the invasive map. Uh, you, can, you can see our point data there. Uh, the next one that we're going to discuss is, is photo projects. And so these are individual ones that, that I have. And then uh, Jerry and I have a few that we share back and forth because we border each other and we can share those. And if he's out there, he can take a picture. If I'm out there, I can take a picture and we know and it gets uploaded, uh, which is really, uh, really nice and handy to be able to have that multiple users uh, to be able to see those. Our next one is our county data sets. I really like uh, being able to see data from all the counties that surround my border. So I have that set up from edmaps.org and I go through and like I said, Jerry and I work on some of our projects that are right on the border and we can toggle those on and off when we're working there. And, and if I revisit something, you know, he'll see it. If he revisits something right there on my county, then I'll see it. The next one is, is the saved query sets. Uh, like I said before, you go in, it's kind of that same advanced query tool. You create that. Uh, in 2021, I wanted to go and see what uh, Russian knapweed points I had. So I created that and I can go right out to each individual point uh, that I have with that saved query. So we have a unique thing here out in, in Utah is, is that we have some of the counties that don't have cell service uh, all the time, uh, which is which is good and bad for, for users. So uh, we created uh, with Chuck uh, some aerial maps. And the only downfall with the aerial maps that we have here is, is that 
if you zoom into a certain point, you can't, it just, it just goes wide if you zoom clear in, but it's it really nice if you, you, you back out your zoom and then you're able to see those areas. However, on the, the offline roadmaps, we kind of figured that is it, we can zoom in if we have these offline maps. And again, we created those here in Utah and then we sent them to Chuck and then he, he worked his magic on these. Uh, the project areas, uh, we specifically use this quite a bit, uh, specifically for some of the projects that we have. Again, you can create those on edmaps.org. And a lot of these that I have here are just uh, from some of our contractors, they just give us a KML and then I can go and I can just upload it and, and it works perfect. And I can go and see exactly where they're at or what, they, what they've been doing. Uh, the upload queue. So this is where everything goes. When you save it, uh, the new observations, revisits, photo points, uh, contested records, verified records, monitoring zones, all of that goes into here. And you'll see that here at the end of the presentation uh, when we actually upload that, that walk of polygon. One thing that you've got to remember about your, your settings is, is that if you change anything on edmaps.org, you'll want to go to the app settings first. You'll want to be able to refresh that species list, your state species list, and then also your refreshed project species so that you, you'll have the best data right, right then, uh, and it'll all be updated however you move that around. So the next thing we're going to talk about is 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 the other side of of the map, and that's where you press uh, the gears, and then it pulls up these map settings. And I'll I'll go down through these uh, as well. So you, this is what will show from the apps. So the offline options, which we talked about, the offline aerial maps and the offline road maps, you can you can toggle those on and off. Uh, depending on, you know, like I said, we have lots of area where there's no cell phone coverage. And so that map, the map that you see when you're in coverage, isn't going to be the same out in those areas. Uh, auto follow. Uh, if you're, you know, you're tracking to some of the, the points that you can see on your map, uh, it, it's really nice to have that, that heading or along with uh, being able to keep your direction on your device. So the next one is, is the map type. Most maps you can do this to. Uh, you can have it on normal, satellite, or terrain. It just depends on what your preferences is, but you can change that uh, right there on the map type just by selecting that. So the data to display, this is the data that's going to display on your map. So right now I have uh, records checked there, as you can see, that's, that's the county you know, specifically Juab County, and I've got that that selected. You, you can't select multiple things. So if you if you unselect or if you slick down to my saved query, then it automatic that's what you see on your on your map. Or if you just want to see where all your photo projects in your area are, you click that and the same with your monitoring zones. Or if you want to see everything that Chuck talked about is if it's unverified, you, you can turn that on and you can see what's unverified. The next one is, is filter by state list. And so uh, we can filter again uh, by Utah. Uh, and I, we can do uh, that uh, for other states as well. Uh, the next one is filter by species. So if I don't want to see a lot of things, so sometimes I've got some areas like, uh, take for example, Alpha Alpha, I've got one point of that. I don't necessarily need to see that on my map. Uh, but if I, I can filter that off, I can filter it on, just depends on what, what you're doing. And again, it's user specific. Uh, the observation date, uh, we like this uh, specifically to be able to say, okay, what have we done in the last month or what did we miss? Uh, the same thing as last six months, last nine months. And that's the reason why this was created. And as well as, as last visited date, you can filter that out by. We can also filter by this, the status of uh, your weed point, meaning that uh, the positive meaning red, treated meaning yellow, eradicated meaning uh, green, and then negative is, is a blue color that you'll see on your map. And that's what you can, you can filter all of those. And then again, when you, if you filter something, you can go and you can unmark all those filters uh, and then it'll clean the slate again. So the last thing that, that we wanna talk about uh, is 
is walk a polygon. This is a, a new feature. So what we're going to do here is, is we're going to add, we're going to press the, the plus sign on the bottom right hand side of the screen. And this is the new feature is, is, is the walk a polygon. And so when you press that, it's going to pull up uh, with this. And it, also it looks the same, but you, you'll start everything down on the bottom. So if you want to select the interval of having that, uh, whether it's one second, three seconds, five seconds, you've got kind of three options that you can choose of how many points that it's going to take as you as you walk around that polygon. One thing that you've got to remember is, is that even though you press the plus sign, you've got to, when you go to start walking the polygon, you've got to press the start. And then you you start walking all the way around uh, that polygon. And as you can see, it's kind of that purple mark on the screen and it'll start logging and you go all the way around uh, until you get back to it, to your starting point. Again, one thing that that we really do want to mention is, is try not to overlap uh, those polygons because it kind of does wig the system out a little bit and it does with anything. Uh, but if you know, you know where you're walking and how you're doing it, just just keep that in mind. So once we get to that point, we're gonna we're gonna press done when we've completed that, and that saves that information. When you click the done, it clicks you over to where you've got to go ahead and you've got to add your species. This is where you're gonna add your data, and then you're gonna add your your photo, take your photo of the area, which is which is really important. And then again, the observation data is as you can. You can put time spent, uh, you can put the density, and then it automatically, because you walked around that polygon, it's going to create those, the 0.26 acres in there. Now, there's two things on the, on the status thing is, is if, it, if we were just out monitoring and we gathered up that information, that's what shows, or you can do, you can say treated. Uh, and with that, uh, again, Jerry and I are around, uh, this is where the upload queues go and it, it, once you save it, it goes into the upload queue and you can upload it from there. I think with that, that's it. And Jerry and I'll try to field questions if there's any questions on, in, the, in the chat. Great, thanks so much, Kevin and Jerry. Um, all right, next we're gonna hear from Rebecca Wallace. 